Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Mukesh Amidnani, and I'm a consulting architect. I'm the most recent VCDX, so VCDX number 297. And I'm here along with my colleague, Silva. Hi. Hi, uh, Shelva here. So um, I'm a consulting architect with the VMware PSO uh, of almost eight years, and we are here to discuss about the VCDX EMA tips and tricks. Yeah. Right. So what we want to share with you today is our journey, our journey to the VCDX, right? And um, but before we get into that, I wanted to point some disclaimers, right? You know, the views and ideas expressed here are ours. And we are here to share the experience we had since uh, through this journey, right? And then for any updates, you know, there's a website, vcdxvma.com, where we can get all the latest and greater information. So here's a quick agenda we have, and uh, we can go over this really quick. So. So here, what is VCDX? So mainly here, the, one of the VMware's highest level of certification. So to demonstrate your architecture design skill set. And we have a various uh, uh, certification track. We are specifically going to discuss about here is uh, CMA, the Cloud Management Automation. We have a other certification track, which is Data Center Virtualization and the Desktop Mobility and uh, Network Virtualization. So here on the track is uh, the prerequisite you have to start with the uh, VMA certified professional on CMA and then you have to finish your uh, uh, VCAP exam mainly on the design and then the deploy exam. So once you complete these two, you will be badged, given a badge like VCIX, uh, VMA certified expert, implementation expert. That's the main prerequisite to apply for your design expert exam. So, you know, when we started our journey um, going through the VCDX program, the main aspect of it is the time management, right? How we do the time management. And to that, we apply the smart technique, smart, and how it relates to us, right? Um, specific, we had specific goal in mind that we are going for VCDX and CMA. And uh, there are, there are uh, tons of documents which we have to provide as per the blueprint. So those were the specific goals we had to go through in order to proceed for the VCD, right? And how were we measuring it? So, you know, Silva and I worked together on this program. And each of us have um, the customer stories which we combine together, right? So then we started working on, okay, you work on this document this week and I'm gonna work on the other document. And then we were cross-checking our work, right? So we were the critics of our own work, right? And that's how we kept ourselves accountable. And um, the way we were doing it, that it, it was a weekly goal so that we can achieve them taking other you know, day job consideration, family, friends, life into consideration, right? So we wanted to make our goals realistic and and at the same time achievable in a timely manner, right? So that's our way of understanding how we apply the smart technique to the program. Now, there are documents which we had to provide. Yeah. So, so mainly for uh, the pre-submission, you have the various documents. So first thing is like a design document. So that's where you uh, provide all your uh, conceptual, logical, and design, and all those uh, whole design document you have to submit. Along with this, we have a supplementary document, which is your install config guide, and then your standard operating procedures. And also, you have to provide the testing and validation with all these screenshots, and also the implementation plan from end to end. So when you start with the uh, designing your architecture, and then um, implementation, everything's like end to end, right? And finally, comes the application and submission. So that's where you submit all your application, your uh, uh, NDA, NDA forms, and all your list of documents listed here, you have to submit. Once you get it, so you have a confirmation email saying that like your, your application is submitted, and you have to pay a fee, uh, of, uh, I think it's uh, almost like $1,000, once you submit the application. And uh, once it's done, and I would recommend like start preparing for the defense right after your submission. Don't wait for your uh, submission to be accepted. Usually it takes a month to get accepted, but don't wait in the last minute. Just start preparing your deck, PowerPoint deck, and start working on your 
mockups and everything for the day one you submit your submission here. So here the other thing after the first submission, um, we, have, we have a various resources, make sure you have a design and defense deck is ready with a high level design deck, make sure like it's like a 15 minutes talk. Exam is like, defense is like 75 minutes, make sure you have a 15 minute slide, high level business slide and most of the rest of the time will be for your Q&A, the three panelists they're going to ask you questions related to your design, just get prepared for that. So, um, and then the pressure testing, I mean like end to end, like make sure like 75 minutes, uh, able to answer well, thoroughly on your design, make sure you run through the whole design end to end, see what you are capable to answer it and the questions will be asked from your design only, so make sure you are thorough in and out and do the markups, markups are very important, uh, consult your coworkers or anyone from the VCDS groups, they are ready to help you assist with the mockups, sign up with the VCDX Slack group and uh, we have a study group, uh, if you search for the VCDX uh, uh, study group exam, so that's the Slack group we are using. So we are happy to assist. We have a mentor program, so um, uh, mentorships that they are they will help you on day one you submit the application, or before that to work on the design document everything they will assist you with the mentoring. Yeah. Uh, next is um, like I said like team works. So you so here we worked as a, you can submit as a single applicant or as a duo as a triple. Uh, here in this case, Mukesh and myself, we work together, we divide and conquer accordingly. So how we can, uh, we, we do a lot of work as team works, it's a lot easier and uh, we accommodate, we review each of us design decisions and make sure we are on top of each and every item. And uh, review the content, make sure you have any no spelling mistakes or anything, so that's very important. And then uh, have the subject matter uh, SMEs and everything to be reviewed, make sure there is any kind of like a mistake in your design logic or any uh, kind of an architectural product wise there is any like any mistakes those are you have to be very careful on those and post submissions make the mockups and panelists have some three four people uh, do a like a act as a role play as a panelist so that's very important and also for the design scenario you have to practice like a 45 minutes design scenario so mostly your first 10 minutes you will be working on your um, logical design, getting the uh, conceptual and getting the recommend and business recommend. So I think Mukesh is going to explain in the next slide upcoming on the design scenarios. So those are the main things. So I'd say like it takes a village and have a whole team work. It's not just you have a team work to help you, assist you on this journey. Yeah. Good. Right. So what we covered so far was what we need from the blueprint standpoint, right? But let's turn the table and look at what soft skills we need, right? A presence of mind, a body language on how we speak, and you know, the, the confidence with how we are presenting or walking over the question they, I mean, answering to the question they have, right? Um, some of these are, you know, daily traits. We all have learned and grown with it, and some we acquire knowing where we don't know. So, so body language, you know, that was the, for me personally, the body language was a problem, right? I get nervous, so I, I started practicing a lot, lot with uh, the mock panels, right? With the mentors and so on and so forth. But one thing I would like to mention here is that what's important here is when the panelists are asking questions, understand the question correctly and try not to interrupt because the question might be lost in the translation then. So understand the question correctly and then try to answer it as if you were answering this question to the C-suite C people, right? Uh, 100 level. I'm going to go a little detail in that in a minute. And then uh, because I did my uh, defense over the Zoom, so for me, everything has to be done on to the, you know, software-based uh, whiteboarding system. So there are a few out there which you can use, but practice, 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 and that how you are going to achieve you know, write down everything in the time you have been provided. So let's turn our attention to what VCDX CMA Blueprint is talking about, right? It talks about availability, manageability, performance, recoverability, and security for the underlying infrastructure. But 
we also have to take that into consideration for cloud management platform and the automation is going to provide, right? So the key in here for CMA at least is that, at least if I were to suggest is that, emphasize on cloud management platform, how the platform is going to provide the availability for the workload, right? Which areas or which data centers are you going to provide the manageability to? How we are going to address the performance not only related to the management platform, but also the workload which you are generating or automating the, uh, during the process. Recoverability, the key topic here. Uh, look for subtle clues on how you're going to do the cloud platform management recoverability, you know, what data storage at, uh, you know, backup aspect you have, and security at all levels, not just at the cloud platform level, not just at the networking level, but at the compute storage and, you know, even at the NIC level. So get to know all that, even if you may not have done the whole entire network because the network already exists, you may not have done the storage all the way to the de deployment, that's okay. Right, but whatever you submit in your design is the fair game for the panelists to ask you a question on. Now, in the so VCDX methodology is very clear, right? Start with conceptual, which is the what, why, and then logically, and eventually you get into the physical aspect of it, right? It's think about the house, right? Why do we need a house? how, what kind of house I need, and how am I gonna build the house, how many levels it will, you know, what kind of faucet, what kind of uh, plumbing and all that. So conceptual, logical, and physical aspect is even applicable to the VCDX. Now let me take you there, right? So conceptually, what am I talking about? What I need to be paying attention here is that my requirements, what are my business requirements? Not just the functional requirement, but also the technical requirement, non-functional requirement, right? Are there any constraints which I have to abide by, which are provided to me by the customer? For example, you know, I have a certain uh, backup and restore technology, and that's all I have. So I have to take into consideration, is it going to be a beneficial for my cloud management platform, or is it going to be providing any risk, or is it going to associate any risk to it? So that's where it comes the risk management, right? Anything and anything which causes any um, performance impact to my platform has to be listed as a risk, and then we go about risk management strategies. Any assumptions we are making that, you know, client, customer is going to provide me X number, X terabytes of data storage, storage for my platform and for the workload, that assumption needs to be validated as we go along. And we make new, we, we will make new assumptions as we go along, but the idea is the iterative process of going through the requirements and getting through that, right? And making sure that the design decisions we are making are justifying the, the qualities which we earlier touched upon, you know, availability, manageability, and all that aspect. So here, here's an example of that, right? Now, you do a design defense, you defend your uh, design solution, but then the second part, which Selva just um, touched upon, is the design scenario. You know, the scenario is given to you based on how you performed in your, um, how, how you perform into your defense, and that's when you start, um, the scenario is more about, okay, given a hypothetical situation, how you're going to go about gathering the requirements, and so on and so forth. So, you know, you don't have to get all the thousand requirements you may have, but demonstrate the quality that, you know, draw the framework, give them the idea of how you're going to get um, those requirements into play, pay attention to the service level agreements and recovery point objective, right? So, of course, there are more to learn from, from the technique, but presence of mind, understand the requirements, and give the answers to the level you, you feel comfortable, and be prepared to provide additional details if they want and ask for it. So that's all I had for you today. And you know, in the end, thank you for the time. Here are the resources available for you. And then if there are any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Thank you. Thank you.